And from advertising now to the craft of public relations and its growing importance in the communications mix. Not only is crisis communication becoming increasingly important, but in the age of this 24-second uh, news cycle, messaging has to be sharp and it has to be on point. And that informed a discussion with Jeremy Galbraith from the big global agency Burson Marstella, who was in South Africa recently. We started with a broad, maybe, articulation of public relations, if we can. I would suggest to you that in this country particularly, and maybe in, in other markets, it doesn't have a particularly good reputation. It's not taken uh, seriously. Is that perception changing? Uh, I think there's a broad uh, distrust of the ways companies communicate. Uh, in fact, we've done research uh, in Europe last year, 3,000 consumers, which showed that actually people think companies lie. 61% uh, mm. in fact. We as communication professionals have to help companies change that perception uh, and to help them communicate honestly uh, and transparently and to get away from the ideas of mm. spin. All too often those companies are lying though, aren't they? Uh, I don't think that's actually the case. Mm. Uh, I really don't. I think companies obviously try to put a good gloss on their position and what they're trying to do. But bear in mind that most of the time companies are actually just uh, communicating about very ordinary things like mm. an, a new product uh, and I know, consumers are looking to find out like, what does that new product offer mm. them. So why do companies have that perception? Why do people, why do consumers think that they're lying? Uh, I think you tend to find that the media is always looking for the good story mm. uh, and as you know, I know a bad story about a company is always a good story for a journalist. Mm. We're going through certainly in many parts of the world uncertain uh, economic times there's been a lot of focus on I know, CEOs' bonuses, for example, mm. uh, corporate greed, and that's led to that distrust mm. between companies and consumers. All too often, I would suggest to you that a public relations strategy or communication strategy is something that is rolled out when the company has a crisis. But it's got to be a lot more than that. You've got to get ahead of that crisis, haven't you? Absolutely. Uh, and the best companies around the world, the best communicators are the ones that are out there kind of communicating all the time, mm. talking to their customers, consulting with their customers, consulting with different stakeholders mm -hmm. to really tell their story. Uh, those companies which communicate at the last minute because they have a crisis mm. are the ones that tend to have mm. the biggest problems. Having said that, though, you've got to have a good crisis communications plan. Absolutely. What, what constitutes that? Uh, I'll give you an example. I was in, uh, I was in Dublin mm. uh, last week, uh, and it was the Golden Jubilee celebrations uh, in the UK, mm. uh, and S Starbucks sent out a tweet to their followers in the UK and Ireland saying, aren't you proud to be British today? Well, anyone who knows anything about, the <laughs> yeah, exactly, uh, the history of uh, Britain and Ireland will recognize the yeah. Irish were not that yes. uh, excited by this. Uh, and uh, it took five hours mm. for Starbucks to send an apology. Uh, probably because that tweet wasn't sent locally. Mm. Uh, it was either sent from London or I know, maybe even mm. the US. Uh, uh, they should have, if they were really engaging in social media, they had to react mm. quickly. They should have come back very quickly with, I know, within, within two or three mm. minutes with a, look, I know, clearly we made a mistake, uh, we know you're proud to be Irish, and we're proud to be a, a Starbucks, having been in, in Ireland for X years with X numbers mm. of shops. That would have d uh, know, taken away the problem. But it does raise the question, doesn't it, as to who controls uh, the message proposition at the outset and that, that's got to be done strategically and it's got to be done by someone who perhaps understands broader implications. Well, and not only that, I mean I think in this, this day of social media I think companies are struggling to think about what are we, why are we engaging on Facebook, why are we engaging on, on, on Twitter, what are we trying to achieve? And if you just think it's a way of sending out announcements, uh, you're not going to succeed mm. in social media. Uh, and I, the Twitter example in Dublin is the one where and I, it's a constant engagement you have to have with, mm. with your followers. You've worked on Olympic Games for bid cities. Yep, exactly. Uh, that's a very different type of communication that you're involved in. What did you do and uh, how do you succeed in something like that? Well, you've got a very small group of people you need to influence. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, it's the executive board of the, uh, the IOC. That's a, like, 15, 15, 16 people. You've got to get past that hurdle. Uh, and then you've got another you know, 100 and 100-odd so mm. members of the IOC at the second stage. Uh, I would have thought that South Africa, which you know, people are, are mm. talking about it bidding for 2024, mm. a very compelling story, bringing the Olympic Games to Africa for the first time, 
Uh, it's a compelling story, uh, and I, South Africa showed with mm. the World Cup it could be done, it could be organised, very successful games. A small group of people to influence, but massive stakeholder involvement. It's a fine balancing line, isn't it? Well, you say massive stakeholder. Mm. Uh, Talking people. about a population of 50 million. Yeah, mm. you, and, and one of the things that the IOC looks at is, mm. and it, is their local support. Uh, and you need to be finding 70, 80 percent of the population saying, yep, we support, we support the games. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about having an effective campaign, a very good technical bid, mm. uh, which shows you can actually host the games, mm. a compelling story, uh, and bringing the games to Africa for the first time. But it's a also campaign. surely a, a campaign, if it's such a small group of people that you're trying to influence, it's almost an individually tailored campaign for each and every person who is going to be involved in that decision-making process. Exactly, and what's in it for us? Mm. Yeah. What do we get from bringing the games to, to South Africa for the first time? Uh, and making it emotional as well. This isn't just a technical bid, it's about the emotion, it's about bringing uh, the world's greatest event mm. somewhere.